So I'm going to be talking about PNB4, which is discuss two effects of the environment on physiological processes. There are many, many effects of the environment that could affect your physiological process, processes like anatomy and physiology, but we're not going to be talking about them all. So what you do is you just start in the introduction and you say that there's lots of processes, but the two we're going to be talking about are is this, this one and this one. And that ensures that you answer the question appropriately and you address the question. So then you go and address the command term because you have to address both. And because it's discussed, it will be this essay will offer a balanced review that includes a range of arguments, factors of, or hypotheses. You mentioned effect one and effect two. Effect one is the um, enriched environment on brain plasticity, and that's supported by Rosenwig and Bennett in 1972 and McGuire et al. The second effect will be a stressful environment and how hormones play a role in it, supported by Fernand and Gunner 2008 and Meany 1988. Now, effect one, which is the enriched environment, that will be a whole paragraph. So. The first effect of an environment on physiological processes is an enriched environment on neuroplasticity. You have to define neuroplasticity, and that's the basically it's just the brain's ability to rearrange its new connections with its neurons as a result of a learning or new experience. What causes it? Well, it's caused by a stimulation of the environment, linking back to the question. And when a person basically when a person lives or when you do something new every day, your brain rearranges and adapts to the conditions. You have to give examples of neuroplasticity, and I would mention case studies, for example, uh, Clive Waring or Patient KF or Patient HM. There's so many, but I would just mention one of them. And then you go and mention the two studies investigated in your essay to support effect number one. And the two studies that I will be investigated get gating are uh, Rosenwig and Bennett, 1972, and Maguire et al, 2000. <clears throat> now, I have done both in previous videos before, so I will not repeat myself due to time efficiency, etc. But I will link you to both, and you can just look at them. I did not, however, do a uh, evaluation of Maguire et al. So the evaluation from Maguire et al is just that the experiment provided evidence of an enri enriched environment, if you relate back to the question, and the enriched environment was being a taxi driver, which had effect on the brain and altered the way that the taxi driver's brain behaved compared to the non-taxi drivers. The disadvantage was that, or limitation if you want to call it, was that it, as it was a quasi-experiment, there was a lack of control over variables. Oh, if you have to mention, um, if you want to add another one, then just say that, um, what is it called? It's, if you want to mention another one, just say that, oh, yeah, that the sample used, there might have been, it might have been biased because the, there was a larger sample size of the non-taxi drivers because it was 50 of them but the taxi drivers it was only 16 yeah if you want to mention that um, now effect number two is the stressful environment and that's just basically that a stressful environment would cause you to change your physiology and secrete different types of hormones and because you mentioned hormones, you have to define it. So hormones are chemical substances that are released by specific endocrine glands into the bloodstream. They then are carried to different organs where they may affect bodily functions and may influence behavior. Now, because you mentioned another woo, big word or something, you have to define it. So the endocrine system can be defined as a system consisting of glands which secrete hormones into the bloodstreams that may affect behavior. I have to mention target cells and that hormones are sent to them by impulses which initiate specific responses. Then you talk about the four hormones and what they're secreted by. So examples of hormones produced by the body are adrenaline and cortisol from the adrenaline adrenals, melatonin from the pineal gland and oxytocin from the pituitary gland and hypothalamus 
and testosterone and oestrogen from the gonads. Now, you have to elaborate upon that and mention the two specific examples used in your essay to support effect number two. And they are Fernald and Gunner, 2008, which investigates the hormone cortisol, and Meany et al. in 1988, which, effect, which investigates the hormone of glucocorticoids. Now, I've done Fernald and Gunner previously, and I will, as I said before, I would not be repeating them, but I didn't do the evaluation, I don't believe. So the evaluation is just that the informed consent for Fernald and Gunner is actually invalid due to the fact that the participants were children, and it's fine to have participants under the age of 18 as long as they can get a parent or caregiver to sign it, but Due to the fact that their mothers were actually depressed and they were not meant, uh, psychologically stable, that means that the informed consent, um, yeah, informed consent was invalid. But there was a low gender bias as the genders were evenly distributed. I believe there was 324 boys and 315 girls. So that is pretty close and that eliminates gender bias. And on to the next study. So Meany et al. 1988 studied rats to find out what the effect of glucocorticoids was on memory. He had two conditions. Condition one was non-handled rats who were taken away from their mothers. And it was very stressful because they did not experience normal grooming. And the second group was handled rats, which was the control group, because they weren't taken away from their mothers and experienced normal grooming. So what he did... What Michael Meany did was he just put rats into a like a large, what you call it, a container? I don't know, like a large volume containing container. <laughs> um, and there was like milky water. Uh, basically, say this 1988, pretend that was a platform. Rats were placed in and, then th- and had to find their way to the platform. And then they were taken out, placed back in, see if they could use their memory to find their way to the platform again taken out, put back in, and this was repeated multiple times, and and they were tracked upon what route they took. And the results showed that non-handled rats secreted more glucocorticoids in response to stress than the handled rats, as expected. And at later ages, non-handled rats also showed elevated basal glucocorticoid levels with the result that there was a greater cumulative exposure to glucocorticoids in non-handled rats. And I know that probably just sounded gibberish to you, So in normal English language, what that means is that they were, the non-handled rats were exposed to a prolonged period of time of stress and due to that the cortisol or glucocorticoid levels had to rise and they had to stay there and they had to stay high and therefore that just became their baseline. So if you just took the rats at any time, not not if you were conducting the experiment, but you just took them at any time, you would notice that their glucocorticoid levels are just naturally higher in comparison to the handled rats. And eventually, hippocampal cell gloss and pronounced facial memory deficits emerged with it <coughs> with age in the non-handled rats, but it was actually almost absent in the handled rats. Now, you have to say that for every animal study, you have to say that it provides insight. So you just have to say something like, even though the study was conducted on animals, it provided insight into human behavior. And linking back to this, you have to say, as there are several studies which identify the link between glucocorticoid levels and the onset of Alzheimer's. It appears that the rat's mother's grooming, which is the environment, helped activate genes responsible for reaction to stress. The um, evaluation is there was a cause and effect established because it was an experiment. And whenever you mention causes and effect, you have to say what it was between. So it was between the stress and the memory. Uh, A limitation is that because there was only two conditions, the results are not as reliable. And that's it. Now, the conclusion is you just have to write in conclusion physiological processes are affected by the environment in many ways referring back to your introduction and the question again two of which include an enriched environment and a stressful environment now neuroplasticity you have to what 
how I set my conclusion out, I was, I took it about neuroplasticity, then the attraction, the interaction. I took it about hormones, then the interaction, and then just a concluding sentence. So what I said was, neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to reorganize neural pathways, physiology in brackets, based on new and rich experiences, environment in brackets. You see that how that relates to the question, and it's clearly uh, defining and what is it called? It's clearly, I don't know, but it's just ad- addressing. It's clearly addressing the question. You have to say the interaction, the interaction, and the interaction occurs when the enriched environments affect the neural connection in the brain by reorganizing the neural connections in brain areas related to functions that are required in the enriched or enriched environment or condition, and. That's just to give the cause and effect um, interaction. And for you have to do the same for hormones and stress. So what I said was when someone is exposed to a stress, in brackets, environmental effect, the body aims to restore homeostasis and hormones are secreted, in brackets, physiology. As you can see, I clearly address the question again. And then I talk about the interaction, interaction and how that happens. So the interaction occurs when the stressful hormone, the stressful environments affect the release of hormones from the endocrine system based upon how the body needs to cope with the response. Then I talk about the, the just a concluding sentence. It can therefore be stated as a result of the supporting studies and theories mentioned that a bidirectional relationship exists between the environment and the physiological process forming a strong interaction you must mention interaction otherwise that will lose you marks okay good luck